Hi, I'm Zia Zaman, and uh, I'm here to talk to you today about how hard it is to innovate in a large organization. In fact, I'm going to go through three things with you today. First, why does MetLife even need a chief innovation officer? We're a Fortune 50 company, been around for 148 years, doing quite nicely. So why do they need innovation? Secondly, who would have thought that insurance would be one of the first industries here? For two years now, we've had thousands of customers slapping on VR headsets and having a virtual reality experience. I'm going to show you a little demo about that later on. And number three, I want to give you back something. We did some original research about where Asia is going, and we had some consumer trends about 2020. And so I'm going to go through those in turn. But first, I'm going to start with a little history lesson. It's a bit of a, a quiz or joke. What is the only thing that insurance and innovation have in common? Anyone? They're laughing. What? <laughs> nothing, nothing, I heard that. Their position in the dictionary. Seriously, when's the last time you actually went home and started talking to your friends or family about, oh boy, I bought this amazing insurance product, you gotta get it. In fact, the last major innovation in insurance, it's been about 25 years ago, something called critical illness, is you, we pay out before you pass away. So I'm obviously not from insurance. I spent 22 years in tech in the valley working for some small startups, some, some big companies and a couple of exits as well. And so when I came to insurance, I looked at it and I said, hmm, this industry might be ready, might be ripe for disruption, $5 trillion. And we interact with our customers 1.44 times, not a month, a year. So you're a customer of an insurance company, a life insurance company, we'll only interact with you one, one and a half times a year. Is that sufficient? Probably not. And then something amazing happened in the last couple of years. It wasn't about fintech, it was about insurtech that came out of nowhere about $5 billion of investments, according to CB Insights, in the last two years for InsurTechs. This is in Sand Hill Road and across the world. And this is our chart, the one that we produce here, as I'm the CEO of Lumen Lab, around what's going on in the InsurTech landscape in Asia. I speak around the world about this, and I'm gonna give you some perspectives about the four things you should be looking at if you're a startup or an investor, or you're actually an innovator like me within a large organization. Here's that $3.2 billion number. And what's interesting this year versus last year is two things. Number one, there have been more reinsurers that have been gotten involved than ever before. The second thing that's super interesting is that instead of get funding full stack in, in, uh, innovation in insurance companies, which means people who completely disrupt it, we have a lot of collaborators, insure techs like you, who work with us as the large incumbent to make our experience better in some way, shape, or form. And I want to talk a little bit about them a little bit later on. So why did I come after having spent some time at, again, startups and search industry um, in, in mobile? Two real reasons. The first is a term that we coined called the Asiafication. This is what Asiafication means. It means that the demand curve in every industry is bending towards Asia. Whereas in the past, you used to be able to build product for Western Europe, North American markets, and let it eventually trickle down to Asia. Not so anymore. We believe you have to innovate in Asia, for Asia. And that's what the Asiafication of demand and Asiafication of insurance is mandating. The second is goes back to that 1.44. We live in the experience economy. We as brands are judged by the value that we deliver through every experience. UX is the new IP. So the second thing I want to talk about is while we can build innovations like virtual reality and other things that make it a, a more pleasant experience, the culture is perhaps the biggest takeaway for anyone who's working in an enterprise environment. You need to change the culture. And the C-level people that I speak to gravitate towards the idea that there is a difference between an innovation culture that has certain behaviors versus the incumbent culture. And I want to talk to you a little bit about what those differences are. So we believe that a simple way to define innovation in a large organization is twofold. The first half is around things around design thinking, exploration. And the second half is where we really excel, and that's about experimentation. I don't believe in hackathons. I don't believe in ideas. Ideas are cheap. It's all about the experiment and setting it up in a test and learn to very quickly de-risk any project that you have. We've been doing this for some time, and we have some great experiments and pilots and rollouts, but it all comes from following a process which is pretty regimented. It's a stage gate, venture capital-like process that we use internally at MetLife. This is even more important. These five behaviors, 
Now, I come from a STEM background, science, technology, engineering, and math. I'm kind of shocked when I got into a financial services organization at how few of you, I know this isn't the money stage, this is the SaaS stage, but few of you in the financial services organizations actually believe in these behaviors. Curiosity. When's the last time you looked for different stimuli or different places, other industries? Expansivity. When do you say yes and? Not, you don't see a lot of improv comics in the financial services. Experimentality. Do you test and learn? Velocity. Do you do things quickly? And do you have the bravery to stand up to the hierarchy? These are the cultural things we need to change within a large organization in order for you to actually deliver some of these key innovations. That should be your biggest takeaway if you're wondering, what shall I do as a chief innovation officer today? To do something different, you actually have to do something differently. Verbs, not nouns. Remember that, and some great innovators up there. The previous one was actually Scott Cook, not usually the cook that most people quote. Scott Cook was, go back to his quote, the original fintech, into it, continues to be a, a, a pioneer in figuring out how we can deliver value to customers. All right, I want to switch gears a little bit and talk about us for just a, a little bit of time, because I was asked to highlight maybe one innovation out of all of our portfolio that's kind of interesting. So we've done some things around health, and they, they are health quizzes and things to do with um, dementia to help people better manage their lives. But the one that I want to talk a little bit most about is called Converse. And I didn't make this video that I'm going to put up there. Um, someone else did. But I'm going to let it run for a little bit to tell you a little bit more about why it is that two years ago, thousands of people in India who used to have a not so great experience dealing with large financial services organization are now giving us an NPS score of I've seen as high as 97. So I'll let this video play. Now I'm talking a bit. Wow, now that was some sightseeing. And it's really interesting to see virtual reality enter all these spheres like travel, architecture, design. But the one sphere you probably would never have imagined virtual reality and associated it with is insurance. Yes, PNB MetLife Insurance has actually used virtual reality to hold demos for their users to really tell them about their services and for general feedback. Now, I tried this and it was really, really interactive. Now, who would have thought that something like insurance could have a tech angle to it? PNB MetLife Insurance has entered the digital platform. To enhance customer service, they have introduced virtual reality for better engagement. Using the camera of your phone, you can also capture any document. For instance, place an ID card and the information on the card is displayed in front of I think you get the picture. The press was writing about it and saying, never would I have believed that in such a boring and tangential, words they actually use, boring and tangential industry, would you see a virtual reality implementation. It's not really Magic Leap, but it really works for the particular experience that we're trying to deliver. And again, it's, it's, it's delivering real results in our environment. Another message I want to give you is, it isn't always just about the big disruptive things. You need a portfolio across, across your innovation um, landscape. You need to do things that are up in the top right which are disruptive, certainly reimagining what industry that you're in. But you should also look for things that are differentiating. And what we did is we realized that these insurtechs or fintechs have a lot to offer us to differentiate from some of the other businesses. And I want to talk a little bit about collaboration. This is the new innovation. Rather than build everything yourself, you can never innovate faster than the market, you need to collaborate more. And so we ran a startup engagement program, and I want to talk a little bit about the companies. It's not about us. It's about the problem statements that we published that said, hey, here are 16 things we're trying to fix, and here are 56 people, these are called champions, they are going to help you, one of these eight startups, figure out how to do a match. And these are the eight finalists. If there are any VCs in the room, please go ahead, invest in them. We love these companies. And I want to talk to you a little bit about the three or four that we're actually going to do deals with and why we like them. So I'm going to click this through. I'll start with Unifor. Unifor was the overall winner. It won our first prize. It does speech analytics. It helps you understand the meaning of all the speech, of all the, vo the voice that you might have in an organization. So that applies not just to insurance, but to anyone who's trying to get some understanding of meaning. So if you hear someone say this, what's the best response in order to get them to where they want to go? Flamingo is arguably the best chatbot I have ever seen. I've seen a lot of chatbot demos, but this little company in Australia has really nailed it. And as a front-end device, Flamingo's got it. And therefore, we're going to implement them as well in a couple of countries. And the last one's actually my favorite from an excitement point of view, because this is about inclusion. And I'll talk about Democrance, um, a little software company out of the UAE, from the perspective of how do you embed your risk product into things that people are already doing? 
in particular, buying a mobile prepaid card, or taking a taxi ride, or a, a shared ride, or maybe even buying milk powder. And that's how we can include the next two billion people on this planet in the rest of the economy. And I want to talk about that in a second. So the original research, what I want to end with is this. I want to give you guys back some things that we see is happening in the Asian landscape over the next five years. So it's the first time we're presenting this at RISE, so you guys are getting the, for the preview. I'll share this elsewhere. But rather than look at a rear view mirror and try to figure out, like management consultants tell you to do, where you should go forward, what we think is we should use a future back strategy. And for us, it's these three um, th things that matter the most. The first is in blue, the top row. And I'll put it this way. You need to deliver a user experience that's either one of these two extremes. Either your experience is a disappearing interface. Your phone stays in your pocket. You have autonomous computing. You don't have to think about it. It may be conversational. Everything just falls into the fabric of what it is you do. This is an experience that wins. On the other end of the spectrum, way over here, you've got the experience which is augmented. It's a wow experience. It may be augmented reality, it may be virtual reality. It is immersive. And people love immersive holodeck-like experiences as well. Everything in between doesn't work. If you're a brand and you're thinking omni-channel or something that's just not a perfect experience, that's either completely autonomous or completely wow, then don't do it. That's one of the big things that we learned in this original research. In purple here is trust and risk are fluid. The simple way to put this is, just because you've been around for 150 years in your category, doesn't mean that you will stay in that category and there won't be other entrants. Witness Alibaba and Ant Financial. They've moved into other spheres. And the reason is that consumers tell us that they judge a brand by how much value they've, been, they've delivered most recently. What have you done for me lately? And if you trust a brand for something here, you should trust that brand for something here, even though it spans that category. Trust and risk are fluid. And the last one's to do with the idea around, we need to take care of all of us in our community, our employees, our citizens, our, our family members around three major things. One's physical health, one's financial well-being, and one's emotional health. It's something we don't talk about enough here in Asia, but emotional, financial, and physical health are part of this equation to make our world go better. And that's where I really want to end. These trends lead to four big things in insurance. First is health. Health is the flip side of life. This isn't about writing a check at the end of one's life. This is about how do you make me live longer, happier, healthier lives. The second is about the next two billion. And I think that there are about five groups that are underrepresented in the world. Octogenarians, people of faith, um, the, the rural emerging middle class, the rapidly urbanizing, and women. Underrepresented in financial services, and we know how to get at them with companies like Democrats. And AI and Augmented Advisor, I don't see it as more of a terminator at all. It's more about what I was talking about over there. How do we augment an advisor to give them the experience of how to help people? In five years, my last slide here, 60% of your interactions will be automated in some way. 25% of your new products will be sold digitally. Women will buy more products than men. And in your industry, whatever industry you're in, one of these unicorns is going to get bought. Thank you very much. I'm Zia Zaman. Um, come talk to me later about innovation in the enterprise. Thank you.